You know who's legitimately still a really good hockey player? Phil Kessel. This is not the first time we had spoken about Phil Kessel in trade talks on this YouTube channel. By far, we'd made videos about almost all the trades, I think. But in recent memory, I mean. We already made a video suggesting the idea of another Phil Kessel trade coming up on the block, but according to Arizona Coyotes insider Craig Morgan, we might be in a position where that kind of thing is more likely than not. Now, I will say, the recent events of the Arizona Coyotes, from the acquisition of younger guys to the shipping away of guys like Ekman Larson and Connor Garland, etc., have really changed the public perception of that organization from the time we made that previous Kessel Trade video until now. The Coyotes are rebuilding now, and it's quite obvious to see what they're trying to do here, and Phil Kessel, being a guy who is on this team, who quite frankly was really good on this team, and who is 33 years old, Hey, guess what? There is indeed some things going on there internally. Most likely, I would say. Not to me, for sure, or anything. I'm just saying most likely. Phil Kessel, as you know, he is a Stanley Cup champion, 33 years old, 6 feet 203, a right-wing player, making $6.8 million a season of an AAV with salary retained. His real AAV is actually $8 million. That goes on till 2022. He's got a modified no-trade clause and a no-move clause as well. Initially with Toronto, he was moved around to Pittsburgh and eventually Arizona. He is a pretty good point producer. We saw what he's able to do with the Penguins in the two cup runs. They did an absolute monster over there alongside of Nick Bonino and Carl Haglin, of all people. As the years have gone on, though, Phil Kessel's biggest asset has pretty much stuck around with him, his goal production and his speed. He carried over those skills from Toronto over to Pittsburgh, where he was putting up 90-point seasons, 82-point seasons, and 82 games played, but when he got sent over to Arizona, things kind of worked itself out in a weirder way than we would have liked. He had 38 points in 70 games played in his first full year with the Coyotes, 14 goals, 24 assists. It didn't really work out all too well. In the playoff bubble, though, he did start to come alive. Four points, nine games played. The Coyotes were eliminated after winning their play-in series. No big deal. Eventually, though, this year in 2021, Phil Kessel kind of went off. 43 points in 56 games played. If you do the math on that, 43 divided by 56 multiplied out by 82, that's on pace for a 63-point pace, which is kind of on par with what Kessel was doing earlier with his Toronto Maple Leaf days. He had himself 20 goals and 23 assists. If you do the math on that, 20 divided by 56 multiplied out by 82 is a 30-goal pace. He did this on the Arizona Coyotes, a bad squad that didn't make the playoffs, and now we have ourselves a scenario where the team around him is not really the same team anymore because Oliver ekman larsen has gone, Connor Garland's gone, you get the idea. Is Phil Kessel next up in line? Well, let's go over onto Spectres Hockey on August 4th to take a look at what is mentioned here by Craig Morgan. Now, the reason I'm using Spectres and not the actual article that Craig Morgan has written out himself is because there is indeed a paywall on the piece on Arizona Coyotes Insider, so if you want to go ahead and read this for yourself if you have a subscription, go ahead and check out the link in the description. But... Spectres Hockey is a free website that in which everybody has access to, so I will leave a link as well to the August 4th edition of Spectres Hockey. This is what it says regarding Phil Kessel on the move. Craig Morgan reports that Kessel's trade status seems to change daily. He felt the club might be content retaining Phil Kessel this season with an eye on shopping him near the trade deadline. However, Multiple sources have claimed that Phil Kessel's representatives have approached the Coyotes' general manager, Bob Armstrong, requesting a trade before the season begins. Honoring that request won't be easy. Kessel would like to play for the Vegas Golden Knights, but a source says they're not interested in acquiring him. The Coyotes might have to remain patient, as there isn't much interest in the veteran winger around the league. And you know, that is pretty interesting. Firstly, highlighting that the Coyotes might have been interested in holding on the Kessel because, hey, at the end of the day, he's a good player. He's making 6.8 against your cap for one more season because, obviously, Toronto's retaining salary from the very first trade made all those years ago. But to hear that Kessel himself and the representatives whom Kessel is under have requested a formal trade and directly naming the Vegas Golden Knights as a team that Kessel wants to play for, that, to me, is pretty significant. However, I will say this, it is kind of understandable to hear that even though Kessel would potentially want to play for the Golden Knights, 
that Vegas just doesn't really want him either. Like, I mean, look. If you're going to go out there and say, okay, which teams out there in the NHL know what it is Phil Kessel is about? It's going to be those teams playing in that Western Division, those teams that have seen this guy night in and night out, and that includes the Vegas Golden Knights. If they don't want Kessel, they probably know what it is that he brings, and they probably know what kind of a player that would be under their system. Their system is hardworking, tenacious, all over the ice, you know, giving opponents a tough time in the offensive zone and the defensive zone everywhere. Phil Kessel, sorry bud, doesn't really do that. He is really good, I will say that, but Phil Kessel has always been kind of noted for not really being the best defensively and having, let's just say, not the best relationships. I don't want to say relationships, that kind of makes it seem like he is not a good guy. Phil Kessel has had disagreements with teammates in the past as to the way they play the game and the styles they play, etc. It happened mostly with Evgeny Malkin in Pittsburgh, if you could remember that. But Phil Kessel, also the biggest thing here, is that he is a right wing, and the Golden Knights, they don't really need any more wingers, they're pretty good on the wings. Marcia So, Smith, Pacioretty, Stone, they don't really need any more of these guys on the wing spots. But, hey, if you're talking about centers, all of a sudden things get a little bit different. Chandler Stevenson is your best center? Okay, you kind of need a little bit of an upgrade there. It's why we spoke about the Vegas Golden Knights being involved in the Jack Eichel trade discussions in the most previous video on this channel. However, if Phil Kessel does indeed want to go to Vegas, it would make sense as to why, because yeah, they are a good team, and Kessel would probably want to play for a good team. And honestly, the entire conundrum that the Vegas Golden Knights face right now with the lack of a number one true bona fide elite center, this is just my own personal opinion, but I do think that Kessel wouldn't really care about that. Kessel plays his best when the puck is on his stick, he's dashing down the wing, and he's sniping it. Or when he's going out there controlling the play himself. Phil Kessel doesn't really you know, slither into the right position and take a one-timer to score goals. When was the last time you saw Kessel take a one-timer? Kessel doesn't really rely on elite center talent to get in the puck and create scoring chances for him. Phil Kessel creates his own scoring chances, and maybe that's the Toronto system coming to play. Maybe that's the fact that he played in Toronto with, like, Bozak and all these other guys that weren't really elite number one centers to feed him the puck, and he was still an incredibly good hockey player in Toronto. You take a look at what happened with Evgeny Malkin, for example, that experiment didn't really work. And the reason it didn't work is because, hey, Kessel's a guy who plays his best when he has the puck, he holds on to it, he sets up play himself. Malkin, similar mold. Malkin and Kessel both play a lot worse when they're the guys that don't have the puck and they're trying to find open space and slither into the open areas for a one-timer. It's why they had so much of a disconnection there. In Arizona, it's not like they have any elite setters either. Like, I'm sorry, Derek Stepan, but you're not the same tier of a Crosby or a Malkin. And so, for the Vegas Golden Knights, I honestly think that if a guy like Phil Kessel is wanting to come play for you, firstly, that's some pretty big leverage. You do have the right to go over to Bill Armstrong and say, hey, your guy wants to play for us. Look, we'll give you this trade package. It might be less than what you would have wanted for this guy, but hey, he wants to play for us. We know that, which gives us some pretty good bargaining power in these conversations here. This is an opportunity, I think, if you're the Vegas Golden Knights, to go out there and acquire a 20-30 goal scorer for cheap, assuming you would actually be willing to do it. Now, of course, Phil Kessel does come with a price, 6.8 against the cap until next season, but come on, as we spoke about in the previous video today, if you're Vegas and you want to win a cup now, you might have the authority to go ahead and just trade away a whole bunch of prospects and whatnot to do that. The Arizona Coyotes want prospects anyway. If you get Peyton Krebs in a trade like that, then my goodness, seeing the Arizona Coyotes play Dylan Gunther with Peyton Krebs and anybody else whom they acquire to be on this team long term, either via trade or using those draft picks, the multitude of draft picks they've acquired over the past few weeks, in my opinion, honestly, it makes sense. But I could understand why if the Vegas Golden Knights sit there and they say, well, Kessel's good, but I mean, we want a center. We really do need a center. We have so many wings already that we don't even know if we'll have room for a Phil Kessel. Then, okay, fair game. It is easy to talk about it, though, because Phil Kessel, I mean, he used to be one of the top point producers in the NHL, and he still had a really strong season this year. So talk to me in the comments what you think about Phil Kessel apparently wanting to go to Vegas and the entire trade request itself. I hope you enjoyed this Vishal Shrolson 9 and bye.